Welcome to Historic Adventures. Today, we're thrilled to whisk you away to the captivating Flint Castle. In the annals of medieval conquest, Flint Castle emerges as the vanguard of King Edward, the first audacious bid to subdue the Welsh lands. Nestled in Flintshire, its formidable walls bear witness to a pivotal chapter in history, marking the onset of a series of bastions erected by the English crown. Here, amidst the rugged Welsh landscape, Edward I laid the foundation stones of his ambition, seeking to assert dominion over these ancient lands. In the Annals of Conquest, strategic foresight marked the selection of this site in the heart of Northeast Wales. Here, at the precipice of history, Flint Castle rose to prominence, a mere day's march from the stronghold of Chester. Its proximity to the River Dee ensured a vital artery for supplies, while a nearby ford, unveiled at low tide, offered a passage into the English realm. In this landscape of calculated advantage, the stage was set for the unfolding drama of power and ambition. In the year 1277, a grand endeavor unfurled upon the Welsh landscape as Richard Longinor, destined to ascend as mayor of Chester in 1304, laid the foundation stones of Flint Castle. With a legion of 18,000 laborers and master masons toiling in unison, hewing local millstone grit ashlar and sandstone, the fortress began its ascent from the earth. Among them, the esteemed Savoyard master mason, James of St. George, was entrusted with the mantle ad ordiandum opera castorum ibidem to orchestrate the grand symphony of castle construction. Thus, in the brisk April air of 1278, James of St. George assumed command, breathing life into the once languid pace of progress. For 17 moons, he stood sentinel over Flint's rising towers until duty summoned him to Rudlin, where another chapter of architectural marvel awaited its denouement. As the echoes of hammers and chisels subsided in the year 1284, Flint Castle stood as a testament to Edward I's grand vision. Within its formidable walls lay an inner ward, guarded by three majestic towers and a detached keep, a silent sentinel overlooking the inner gatehouse and outer bailey. Separated by a tidal moat, these domains were linked by a stately gatehouse and drawbridge, where the pulse of life flowed between fortress and town. Beyond the outer bailey, a plantation town emerged, a testament to the crown's ambition. The cost of this endeavor was not trivial, as Edward I invested 6,068 pounds, an immense sum that echoes through the corridors of time, equivalent to 5.7 million in the year 2008. Perched upon the western banks of the River Dee estuary, Flint stood as a bastion of supply, its lifeblood flowing from both river and sea. A protective embrace encircled its harbor, guarded by stout defensive walls. Across the shimmering waters lay its English counterpart, Shotwick Castle, a silent sentinel mirroring its Welsh counterpart's vigilance. In days of yore, ere the course of time shifted, passage across the estuary was a dance with the tides, a perilous crossing navigable by boat at high tide or on foot through the fords when the waters receded at low tide. In the annals of architectural innovation, Flint Castle stands as a testament to cross-continental inspiration. Its design, reminiscent of Savoyard models, boasts a distinctive feature, a corner tower, magnified and detached, serving dual purpose as both bastion and keep. This architectural motif, akin to the famed stronghold of Dordogne in France, finds parallels in the distant shores of Aigues Mortes. It is whispered that Edward I himself, a voyager of great renown, 
may have encountered the imposing silhouette of Aix Mortes during his pilgrimage to the Eighth Crusade in 1270. Yet, another narrative weaves through the tapestry of history, an influence echoing from the southern realms of France, where Jean Maisot's expertise may have stirred the creative fervor of James of St. George, sculpting the castle's grandeur with whispers of distant lands. In the annals of architectural lineage, Flint Castle emerges as a noble heir to the illustrious Carré Savoyard tradition, evoking the echoes of Yverdon Castle. Though grander in scale, its essence remains faithful to the classic contours and style, crowned by the imposing presence of a corner tower, serving as both bastion and keep. Many a scholar attributes this homage to Edward's esteemed architect and castle artisan, James of St. George. Though his hands did not touch flint stones until 1280, his influence, like a whisper in the winds of time, lingered from his arrival in England in 1278. Described as ad ordinandum opera castorum ibidem, entrusted with the orchestration of castle designs, it is his vision that breathed life into Flint's timeless silhouette. Behold the keep, a monument to medieval might and majesty. Its stout stone walls, a testament to the craftsmanship of ages past, stand seven meters thick at the base, tapering to five meters above a formidable bulwark against the tides of time. To tread its hallowed halls was to cross the threshold of history, traversing a drawbridge into the heart of power, the central entrance chamber beckoning from the first floor. Once, another story graced its lofty heights, adorned with chambers nestled within the embrace of thick walls, each a whispered secret echoing through the ages. Atop this bastion of strength, a timber gallery rose, a tribute to the noble Edward, Prince of Wales, who graced its precincts in the year of 1301. And beneath, in the depths of the keep, a vaulted passage encircles, a silent witness to the ebb and flow of centuries past. In the annals of castle law, Flint's design stands as a singular marvel, unmatched in the realm of Edward I's conquests in North Wales. While other fortresses bore the stamp of the English crown's ambition, none mirrored the distinctive contours of Flint. Its layout, a symphony of stone and strategy, remains an unparalleled gem within the tapestry of the British Isles, a testament to the ingenuity and vision of those who crafted its walls. In the annals of history, Flint emerges as the cornerstone of a formidable legacy, heralding the genesis of Edward I's indomitable Iron Ring. Wrought from the ambition to subdue and subjugate the Welsh, this bastion marked the inception of a strategic network of fortresses encircling North Wales. As the drums of war echoed in 1277, Edward wasted no time initiating the construction of Flint Castle, a sentinel of imperial might amidst turbulent times. Half a decade hence, the winds of rebellion swept across the Welsh landscape, led by the valiant forces under David ap Gruffydd, kin to the illustrious Llywelyn ap Gruffydd. Their fervor ignited in defiance against the English crown as they laid siege to the bastions of Flint Castle. In the year 1294, Echoes of defiance reverberated once more as the flames of insurrection, kindled by the indomitable Madog Ap Llywelyn, engulfed the fortress in turmoil. In a desperate gambit to safeguard its sovereignty, the constable of the castle, with heavy heart, ignited the flames that consumed the walls, thwarting Welsh encroachment. Yet, from the ashes of destruction, Flint Castle emerged, resolute and reconstructed, a testament to the enduring struggle for dominion amidst the turbulent tides of history. As the tumult of the Welsh Wars subsided, a new chapter unfolded in the annals of Flint's history. In the wake of conflict, English settlers and merchants were bestowed with titles to properties within the newly established township, 
strategically positioned at the foot of the castle's imposing walls. This plantation burrow, a bastion of burgeoning commerce and civilization, found refuge behind a protective barrier, a defensive ditch fortified by a wooden palisade atop earthen embankments. Though the sands of time have shifted, the legacy of this fortified enclave endures, etched into the very fabric of its streets, a testament to the resilience and fortitude of those who forged a new frontier in the shadow of ancient ramparts. In the annals of English history, the year 1399 bore witness to a momentous chapter as the fate of a king hung in the balance. Richard II, sovereign of England, found himself ensnared in the machinations of power held captive within the storied walls of Flint Castle by the formidable Henry Bolingbroke. This pivotal juncture would shape the course of nations, as Richard II was escorted from the rugged Welsh frontier back to the hallowed halls of London, where destiny awaited with bated breath. Amidst the tempest of the English Civil War, Flint Castle stood as a bastion of royalist allegiance, its walls echoing with the fervor of loyalty and defiance. Yet, in the crucible of conflict, no fortress could withstand the relentless march of history. After enduring a grueling siege that stretched across three arduous months, the parliamentarians emerged victorious, wresting control from the grip of the royalists. But victory came at a price, for in accordance with Cromwell's decree, Flint Castle was marked for obliteration. Its once proud towers and ramparts were laid low, rendered asunder to prevent any resurgence in the fires of war. Today, amidst the windswept moors, and echoing whispers of bygone eras, naught but the haunting vestiges of ruins remain, bearing silent witness to the tumultuous upheavals of a nation in turmoil. In the 19th century, the outer bailey of Flint Castle witnessed a transformation, evolving from a bastion of medieval might to serve the needs of a changing society. Within its ancient confines, the clang of iron gates heralded a new era as it became home to Flintshire's county jail, a somber testament to the inexorable march of progress. Meanwhile, in the shadows of the castle's towering silhouette, the rhythmic echoes of quarrying machinery resounded as nearby stone quarries hewed the very bedrock of the land, shaping the landscape and fueling the engines of industry that drove the burgeoning economy forward. Thus, amidst the echoes of centuries past, Flint Castle stood witness to the ceaseless ebb and flow of human endeavor, forever entwined with the tapestry of history. In the annals of time, Flint Castle stands as a testament to resilience, enduring for nine decades under the watchful eye of public stewardship. Today, this majestic fortress finds its care entrusted to Cadwa, the esteemed guardian of Welsh architectural legacy. Honoring its charge, Cadwa diligently preserves and champions the rich tapestry of Wales's built heritage. Welcoming all who seek to tread upon its hallowed grounds, access to Flint Castle is freely granted, beckoning visitors along a path steeped in history. Within its storied walls, the castle reveals its secrets, offering glimpses into a bygone era. From the solitary grandeur of the keep to the labyrinthine passages, much of the castle is laid bare for public exploration, inviting all to partake in its timeless allure. But what's a castle without its mysteries? Reports of supernatural activity at Flint Castle have long fascinated both locals and visitors alike. From ethereal apparitions drifting through the mist to inexplicable whispers in the dead of night, the castle is said to harbor secrets that defy rational explanation. Documented sightings speak of ghostly figures roaming the battlements their spectral forms haunting the imagination of those who dare to tread within these ancient grounds. Among the most notorious tales is that of the Lady in White, a spectral maiden said to wander the castle's halls, 
forever searching for her lost love. But the mysteries of Flint Castle do not end there. Tales of phantom footsteps echoing through deserted corridors and inexplicable cold spots that chill the very soul serve as testament to the otherworldly forces that dwell within these walls. So, as you reflect on your journey through this historic landmark, we invite you to ponder the possibility that perhaps, just perhaps, the shadows that dance in the flickering torchlight are more than mere tricks of the mind. Could it be that the spirit of Flint Castle itself yearns to share its secrets with those who dare to listen? Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey to Flint Castle. We hope you found our exploration both enlightening and enjoyable. Remember to leave us a comment to share your thoughts. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more captivating content. Why not check out our social media links in the description below? Until next time, keep exploring.